Brian. Yeah, Tom. Uh, we're on lunch break here at the session. Let's oh. go over to Glazer Instruments. And... You want to do it? We're in the oh, neighborhood. Let's take a little trip. We got about, what, 30 minutes? Enough time. Let's go. Let's Who go are on the friends trip. in your neighborhood? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've got to pick up a thing or two over there and pay them for the work they've done. Yes. So let's right. walk out here. Uh, this is the, the little hallway that takes you out to the beautiful fall weather. All right. I'm excited to go on a little trip with you, man. This is great. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, man. Okay. What's the picture? Yeah, and I, my parking spot is a little questionable. You brought the truck today? They always say you should never show your plate number on a YouTube video. You blur that out. <laughs> uh, okay. You keep a nice, clean car, Brian? I try to these days. I got a nice mm -hmm. vehicle. I like to have it feeling right. This one rarely gets driven. Here, you can hold the phone now and you right. can give us a little tour wow. of the neighborhood. So much power. Yeah. On the um, whole network. Let me Uncle give you a little Larry air conditioning. Just driving here. the truck. I'll give you a little, let's get the fan going. What do you listen to? What did you listen to on the way to the session today? I didn't listen to anything this morning. I talked on the phone. Yeah. Sometimes I like to have a nice chat with my old buddy Bubba on the way in to work. It puts me in a good mood. I've been listening to more podcasts lately. And, uh, you have you? Yeah, sometimes I'll use the morning drive as like a centering thing. I'll go deep into some Norman Blake or Tony Rice world just to kind of remind me what is what is good yes, to me. Yes, indeed. Uh, they got a gate here where you can put your vehicle up and then you get, you get out, which is nice. This is my favorite time of year, Brian. I'm so excited. It is a beautiful thing. It's actually a little warm today, but man, it's, yeah, it's a little warm. It's going to be good. So when you pull out of Blackbird Studio here in sunny downtown Nashville, uh, Glazer Instruments is really a stone's throw away, as they say. You yeah. just you go around and say, show them a nice painting. That's a nice painting. I always like that. Nashville's a city of murals these days. Lots of murals. There's Station West down there. Oh, yeah. Spent many uh, hours down there. Many hours in that place. Uh, it's amazing how many studios are here in this little neighborhood. Yes. I mean, if we're not working on Music Row, we're here. Any, you know, uh, do you think that, that, that there's more studios here than there is in Music Row, actual Music Row? Boy, that's a good question. Probably is, yeah. I would say that, like, all, this, all the little stuff, like Mitch Dane's place up here, Vance Powell. Yep. That's probably me. That's okay. There's we're, more. We're, we're going so more murals. Here's the whole East Iris. Used House to be a House of Blues situation. Yeah. A lot of sessions in there, Brian. Oh, man. I got to work with Don Henley in there. Did you? Yeah. Was he crabby to you, too? You know, he, he uh, and there's, uh, what's this place called? Uh, Addiction. Addiction. Yeah, uh, Jonathan Cain's. Have you ever worked there? Trace Horse Recordings? Never been I don't there. know about that place. I've never been there. There's my old music store, remember? I used yes. To, that's where I used to have a music store. Hilarious. Just go hang out. And then I bought that building wow. and sold it. And I should have kept it. Real or, estate mogul. I should have kept that. Uh, here's like, I take the kids to this little park every once in a while. Here's Glazer Instruments, which, by the way, I joke around with Joe all the time. He has never lifted a single finger to pick this to clean this building up. Look at how in it's pretty trashy. disarray this building is. <laughs> Look at some of the, the strips, or the, the, the wood around the windows. Oh, I know. <laughs> I knew I was here the first time I came. It was so trashy, and then there's the Eddie Van Halen mailbox. Yeah, look at this place. He can make this so nice if he wanted. Yeah, just he just doesn't care. Uh, Go around the side, you know. They think they do that. Did you do that too? Well, there was sort of a COVID use. You yeah. around the side. There's an old cemetery back there that a lot of people buried. Yeah, Derek Wells says that his he's grandparents. Well, he's not back there, but his grandparents I think were buried back there. Really? Yeah. Joe's Charlie never dress. Come on in, side door. I'm glad they don't know we're coming. Yeah, they have no idea. Hello, boys. Hey, Nick. How you doing? Nick Druschel, everybody. 
The, uh, Uh-oh. Who says? Says? <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. This is the guy that uh, refretted and fixed up the green dress I showed you on the last video. <laughs> wonderful job. Thank you. He's still good? It's so All good. good. <laughs> Thank you. It's so good, man. Oh, man. What you guys up to? Uh, we were just goofing around. We were at the session, and I go, I'm going to go over to Glazers real quick and pay them and get that check. <laughs> and then he says, let's make a video out of it. So that's what we're doing. Content. Hey, give us a quick tour of the, of the shop if you got two minutes. Hey. Yeah. I know you're probably busy. So, this is our workload. Yeah. Right here, we got, we're getting all the stuff here. Yeah, yeah, everything in the closet Show there. That. Wow, everything in there is to do. To yeah. Do. yeah, that's everything. And then we have the whole flex room up front that needs to Good Lord. Get all cleared up. Can you believe Brian, Brian sets a cow, man? I know. I hear pretty steady. Mm -hmm, pretty steady. Those steady acoustic guitar hands. Um, we were just joking around about about the building being in total disrepair at all times. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a meth lab. <laughs> it looks like a meth lab. <laughs> <laughs> you can see some of the faces. Uh, all right, look at all this fine milling equipment. Yeah, we got uh, metal CNC there. Wow. Do all of our prototyping on that, you know, and make the tail pieces, that kind of stuff. Um, Bridgeport Mill, we do all of our metal work on that. I remember when Joe first bought that. I do. It sold a 59 pickup ring. You for, did? For a, you got that? pickup ring, you got that. Fantastic. And then this one we do a lot of our just generic routing, wood routing on. Are you just going to route those strings right on there? <laughs> That's how I you think do it. Wants the I always board. wonder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where's the down. boss today? Is he not here today? He's out somewhere. I think he went to grab lunch. Okay. What's going on back here? Uh, back here, drying rack, catch all room. Then we got a CO2 laser that will cut yeah. out four templates, stuff like that. Uh, fiber laser that we mark all of our vendors on. Where do you make the actual meth? <laughs> Is that back here? <laughs> I think we might have all the ingredients. Where do you cook it? And then got a paint booth back here. You might want to do a zoom in on Nick's t-shirt because that's an awesome company that makes <laughs> amazing guitars that he makes. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't okay. advertised that in a while. High nine guitars. I'm too busy. I, it's You've officially been too busy advertised. Making, yeah. Getting back here for all the vender stuff. That car, that one's got a broken headstock, right? And the neck's not off. Dude, man. Is this, is this still some flood guitars there? Uh, yeah, we saw some in the attic. Dude, what about that 6120 right there with the broken neck? Is that a flood guitar? No, that's not a flood. I don't know who that is. Well, I'd like to buy that. <laughs> well, I'll show you one upstairs. It is a great Really? Yeah. Then you see Aaron's back here. Hey. It's a quiet day here. Show them the front, the library. Yeah, this is for the public enters. Yeah, this is where the public enters. Yeah, this is where the public enters. And here's Tom looking back, handing over his credit card <laughs> to Nick to pay for the fine repair. <laughs> And if you go up here, that's where the Fleck. Oh, yeah, the Fleck machine. Front and I bet a lot of people haven't actually seen a Fleck machine. Amazing technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guitar disappeared. It's the first guitar I've ever lost. It's I think I probably took it to a session and that lost was it there. Six months ago? Yeah. Uh, I've never lost a guitar. I mean, it's not a big deal or anything, but I'm not tripping on yeah, it. Yeah, it's really weird to put a lot into that, though. Yeah, I put, I, we put a ton of money in it. This may be a good spot for an edit point. Yeah, he showed up here and guess who just walked, walked in? in? Look at that! Back. I'm, I'm making God. a guest appearance. So what was the, lunch? I ran out to get so some tortillas. I made right. black mole, you know. Oh yeah, mole yeah. yeah. last okay. night. Wow. And um, okay. That's what I, was I realized that uh, I could eat it with a spoon, but if I offered it to any of these guys, they would want a handle, which is a tortilla. Yeah, yeah. Got it. that's why you're being That's God made it so it was nice. So Joe, a uh, couple questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Yellow. Yeah. How long ago the strings? did you start Glazer Instruments? What year? That's a matter of definition. 
I started building stuff in the mid 70s. Okay. And you grew up out west? If I grew up, I started in Missouri. Missouri. Denver. Denver. Boston, Bay Area, New Mexico, right. Italy, Bay Area, Nashville. That's my, wow. that's my path. Those early strats that you made are legendary with the flaming X. How many did you make? I made a few strats. I made many more tellies. Many more tellies. And I, you know, I started, I started my serial numbering. I, I got this metal stamp somewhere so I could, I made my bridges. You couldn't get this stuff. Yeah. And there was no all parts. There was no, all you could do is go oh, down to, to um, what was this? What, what was the, on there? You, oh, you yeah. yeah. music mm -hmm. and buy Fender stuff if they had it. Right. And there, Any they, hardware. Yeah. yeah. And you could get, if you were professional, you could get the 5% yes. professional discount. Yes. Which came in handy. What year did you make your first Tellier Strat, roughly? 74. 74. And did the early ones have those super flaming necks like you got known for? I mean, I, when I made my first necks, I made I made tellies and benders prior to making necks. I moved here and I was afraid to make necks. I just yeah. thought there was something you couldn't do. Yeah. And I, when well, the pick and parlor was here then. Yeah. And I went in there and I was talking to Coley Coleman and Petchalot and Jerry Jones. I think Jerry Jones said, Man, you should make a neck. And I said, well, well, what do you do about a truss rod? He said, you just make a truss rod. You know, <laughs> Jerry Jones was never. And so it. I took a now valuable 1970 Tilly neck wow. and sawed it in half to figure out how the truss rod worked. You did that. Yeah. And in 70, whatever yeah, it was, this wasn't worth sure anything. Else. And that's how it works, right? It's got a, it's got a curved, concave, is that what they call yeah, it's that? About so that's when you loosen and tighten it. Yeah, yeah, you tighten it, it wants to straighten out, it pushes yeah. the neck this way. Yeah. Makes sense. If all that works. Mm -hmm. And sort of where it touches. I mean, these things are crude. These are like mm -hmm. 1780s technology. Maybe. Because if you... If you put the, the center, the apex of this hump down here, it'll straighten out here and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Boy, I recognize that, that writing there. What's that say? What, uh, I've seen that on some of those. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing is, it's thick here and the truss rod stops working here, which is why you see those bases where the, the neck comes up like right, that, you know? Right, right. But, um, so Ricky Skaggs played like, on all that famous shit, like Country Boy, he's playing your guitar, yeah? The Purple Telly. The Purple Telly you made. Which he's pulled back out of the closet. It's still yeah. It's resurged. It's a cool feeling, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, I've forgotten. Yeah. Since, since, um, since I bumped my head, or maybe it was lacquer thinner, or maybe it was solder. I don't remember anything anymore. I mean, you guys look familiar to me. Yeah. <laughs> like I've been here a time or two. Have you? Yeah. No, I don't remember. People bring in instruments all the time. They go, "You made this." And it's like I don't. I don't. Yeah. Call doing it, but I made I made somewhere between 100 and 200 instruments, probably 180 instruments. About a third of them were electric mandolins, maybe wow. you know, a little telly, right, like yeah, little mando casters. Joe's the only guy I know who's such a hoarder of fine instruments that yeah. he literally found a black guard telly in his closet that he forgot he had. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> I think I sold it to you. You said I'm gonna keep this forever. Which meant uh, forever is a month and a half, which is a country that. song, by the way. Oh man, I can't believe you found a black girl tell you didn't even know you had it. That's amazing. There's, you know, because because unlike you guys, you just buy stuff and put it away. I'm not really a, a guitar player, you know. I'm a steel player. Steel player, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. loosely described, I'm a steel yeah. player. I play piano, you know. So I, I got guitars as much to have a library, right, of things to look at. Sure. How many old thirties L fives you have? I've whittled it down. I've probably got it some. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, th I thought the, the Gibson, I mean, I was never caught up in that D'Angelico thing. Yeah. Just because it was such a hot, you know, yeah. just because it was such a doctor lawyer thing. But I, yeah. I like the old L5s and Super 400s. Yeah. That's what I collected, which is the way you want to collect. You want to collect something that steadily loses value over right. time. Right, exactly. Would you say that those two guitars uh, illustrate the finest yes. workmanship that yes. Gibson ever put yes. forth. They put their best workmanship in right. that one, arguably mandolin, you know, the right. F5 mandolin for a while. Right. But because that thing was, you know, because big bands were hot, because that's really, I mean, Martin really had the kind of 
not folk, but kind of pre-folk yeah. market. Gibson didn't. Mm -hmm. They had the big band production thing, and they put everything they could into that. What do you, what do you personally think about the workmanship you've seen on some of the golden age D'Angelico's compared to Gibson? Well, I mean, D'Angelico was. He, he kind of followed Gibson, mm -hmm. you know, when Gibson made the small body guitar, and George Groom maybe, he'll, he'll look, if he sees this, he'll go, it's not true, it actually, you know. <laughs> so I'm an unreliable witness. But I think Gibson pioneered, really pioneered a lot of this yeah. stuff. And um, the Golden Age, D'Angelico, you know, D'Angelico's were pretty nice, but kind of crude at the same time. Yeah, they were. Because they were meant to be appreciated at a distance. Yeah. The sound doesn't even develop in the first 10 feet, right, you know. Right. And his big band, nobody got close to the bandstand. So it, it's not that he didn't care, it just didn't matter. Right. You know, if it looked pretty good. He wasn't, he wasn't, this was before the right. age of the the doctor lawyer with the magnifying glass and yeah, too much money. Sure. He wasn't after it. And those players didn't care about it. Right. They wanted something fancy because they wanted to, they were in their tux, they wanted to be on stage, right. and they wanted to look really great, and like they'd spent a million bucks. You know, all those guys wore suits. Yeah. You know, it was like they were they trying to look like, they didn't have any money, but they wore suits. Yeah. Um, and I think D'Angelico correctly identified yeah. intimate uh, cosmetics as being yeah. unimportant. Yeah, yeah. What do you got cooking around here lately that you're excited about? You've always got something going. What are you excited about? I really about? do, I can't talk about it. You can't talk about it? Got a few things. Okay. Now, we're, what, what are we? What are we? You know, I'll show you something. Yes. Uh, you, you just pause there, or just here's the tortillas no. I bought today. This oh, is you must have nice tortillas. I ran oh, out, okay. and yeah. it's black label. You know, they didn't oh. even put a brand on here, so they're either really good or really bad. No, those are going to gain in value, probably. Yeah, yeah, they will. Yeah, well, yeah. some of them will never get eaten. Here's huh? the Music City Bridge display, which is I'll I'll show them this while you're gone, Joe. Right. And then we got to get back to work, so don't lollygag. What is the music city bridge? Is this these are the ones we made, uh, designed. Oh, this these, is you. Yeah, yeah, right. these yeah, this, this is one hundred percent Bukovac. He came in here and he went, came in and said, you know, what are three things you hate? About? Yeah, no, well, we, are, and we. I can't this is the, this. We left the world in better condition than we found it. That's good. Went by making these bridges. Oh yeah, people like them. People they really like do. Them a lot. Yeah, they really work. Um. So we make we make these tools called nut drivers. Yes. And. These, we made these for a while. Let me put yeah. my glasses on so I'm not an unreliable. Yeah. Um, they have, so every fender has either a 50 thousandths, which is the American mm -hmm. bridge on a set, on a strap, mm -hmm. a 1 16th, which is what a telly yep. hex is, yep. a straight slot like the old tellies, or a 1.5 millimeter, which is what the imports are. Mm -hmm. And so, and these things, They've got some heft to them. Yeah. They're easy to use. Put them in the case. And I got, and this, they're locked in. I got sick of, I got sick of um, looking for stuff. So we made these. Yeah, cool. So that's all four yeah. things you could possibly. And get. the two American sizes are are either in one's big, one's small. Yeah. So if you want more American, that's that. Yeah, and if you want the, yeah. the metric, it's on the other end of the screwdriver. So yeah. it, it's kind of intuitive. That's awesome. And so we just added to that. It's called nut driver. We just added this, and. What this is, uh -oh. you know, when you get a, a Strat or a Tele yeah. and the, the screws are sticking up in your hand, yeah, I hate that. and you've ever tried, even if you have a belt sander, a disc sander, you try taking yeah. the end off of it, yeah. it'll it'll burn the bejesus out of yeah. your fingers if you yeah. don't drop it. So this goes in here, tightens up, and you take it over the center, take mm. it down, spin it so it's nice and round on the end. Pretty simple, but it's the kind of thing that wow. I've been using all this all these years. So now we. Started making it, we laser this in ourselves. And, and it blah, says blah, blah, Music blah. City Bridge on it. Music City Bridge. That is so awesome, dude. What are you gonna, are you gonna sell these online? Yeah, yeah, we're just dude, fantastic. Yeah, we're already selling these. We just added this to it. This is um, awesome, dude. I want one. What, I want you the know, whole set. what we're trying to do with Music City Bridge is not only take some of the things that were always tools here, yeah, but take things that other luthiers yeah. have used as, as just a little bench trick, sure, mm -hmm. that they. They pitched like um, you know about nut rescue. You know this nut rescue stuff we have. No, that the grass right from? Yeah, it, it's the stuff. 
Is that like the best nut lubrication? It, it's stuff it's so good that, he, that every now and then when I actually have to fill a nut, yeah. Yeah. and I use this, I go, wow, what is this stuff? And then I remember that we we're making it. <laughs> right. And then I realize that I'm just narcissistic. It's yeah. amazing, right? No, it's so much better. But we made this, I pitched this at a leading oh. tool, guitar tool yeah. supply people, 93. And they were like, yeah, I don't know. Right. What made anybody? Right. So we finally started making it. We make three colors. Yeah. And we've made 30,000 sets of this. Awesome. So that gave us that gave us the incentive to do two things. One is put out some of these tools, and two, go to other guitar repair guys and say, "What are you sitting on? Man. What what don't you have the ability to make? Because we can make all this stuff." And so that's kind of that's kind Dude, of the that objective. is so cool, man. So this all, if you go to New City Bridge, you can see all this shit. Yeah, little by little. Yeah. Uh, and then then this nut rescue stuff is on there. Yep, all the stuff is. And Stu Mac has some of it. This is kind of this is. You know, this is like a a, a, yeah, a a fender string tree with an yeah. extra loop for holding right. down the, the G string. The one that really needs it. Yeah, yeah well, the one, yeah. the other one that really needs it. And this is sort of... And this was the first thing that got you all started, right? The 52 Les Paul Bridge. Yeah. That was basically Keith, the first thing, right? Keith had a... Um, he, well, he's got that gold top. Right. And, and he was right. like... I mean, I'm not going to do a stupid Australian accent, but yeah. he, he, he was like, I can't get my hand down on the string. Because right. you can't, you know, the strings are underneath the bridge right. and so I made one I just I just sculpted it out and then um, it took about three days to get out online and and as soon as it did so if you had a, a 52 wraparound tra trapeze plus Paul you could just literally take it off and put that on yeah well, I mean a lot of people copy that now you know yeah. like anything else you can go 50 years with no yep. solution to something yep. as soon as you do it everybody yeah. knows everybody it. knows yeah. four minute mile mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, we gotta go All back guys. to work. Yeah. Love you. Don't work. Thank you. Don't so do this anything. This is our job. Thanks Thank for being you. here, Joe. Thank you. How's everything? It's all good. Yeah, man. It's really good. It's, it's gonna be a good video. And you were off on, the, you were on the road this year a lot. Yeah, I did the, the whole run. Thanks, homeschoolers.